This man's name is Raman Abbas, also known as Hush Puppy. He had two and a half million followers on Instagram. Hush Puppy lived in Dubai and always showed off the most expensive clothes and the fanciest cars, making himself out to be a billionaire. However, it was later revealed that this man was a professional scammer and fraudster. So, how did this scammer become famous on Instagram? How did he manage to swindle amounts of money up to half a billion dollars? And what was the photo that he posted on Instagram that led to his ultimate downfall? This is an extremely fascinating story that you won't want to miss. Make sure you watch it until the end. Today, we are delving into the story of a notorious scammer named Ramon Abbas, who became known by the nickname Hush Puppy. Before becoming famous, Raymond was born and raised in one of the poorest neighborhoods in Lagos, Nigeria. In 2000s, the internet began to spread worldwide, and many people, especially young people in Nigeria, turned to the internet for new opportunities as life and job prospects were limited. Unfortunately, young Nigerians, including Raymond, turned to the world of scams and fraud. Eventually, gangs and communities of scammers were formed, and for them, this became a real job with regular working hours. They would gather and exchange experiences, ideas, and strategies, forming a society of internet scammers that flourished and grew in Nigeria. Every day, these gangs would carry out tens of thousands of fraudulent operations and attempts. Rahman Abbas was one of the young people who was enamored with this world and got involved with digital scam gangs at a young age. Most of the scams that they used to run happened through email, and they specifically used Yahoo as masterminds of deceit. They were known as Yahoo Boys because they carried out most of their scams via email, using Yahoo Mail to lure in unsuspecting victims. Their primary target was Americans, and they obtained their email addresses through various sources. To manipulate the emotions of their prey, the scammers employed various tactics including playing on their greed and desire for wealth. The scammers would masquerade as wealthy individuals, such as princes, bank managers, or lawyers, claiming to require assistance in transferring large sums of money out of Nigeria. With dreams of sudden riches, the victim eagerly replied to the scammer's email, asking what they needed to do to claim their fortune. The scammer, skilled in their art, would then entice the victim further eventually requesting a small transfer of $500 or $1,000 to confirm their bank account before the millions could be transferred. To the victim, this seemed like a trivial amount when compared to the millions they would soon receive, and they were willing to take the risk. The lure of life-changing wealth was too strong, and the scammer knew precisely how to play on the emotions of their prey. Scammers are crafty and use a variety of tactics to manipulate people. One such method is to prey on their emotions. They can use false identities and create a romantic relationships with their victims, manipulating them into transferring money. Another scam plays on the victim's nationalistic pride by claiming to be a brave American soldier stuck in Africa with no funds to return home. These scams are always designed to play on a specific emotion, like greed or patriotism, in order to gain the victim's trust. The Yahoo boys were notorious for their training in these psychological manipulation techniques. Among them was Raman Abbas, who worked tirelessly, sending hundreds of emails every day to scam people out of their money. With time, he became a master of his craft, and when he felt confident enough to go solo, he abandoned his gang and started building his criminal empire. Raman Abbas soon found that he could earn even more money with his own criminal schemes. His ambition exceeded his old life of petty scams, and he began to pursue grander and more lucrative plans. He was a man on a mission, driven to succeed no matter what it took. Ramon aspired to greater things. He recognized that simply sending scam emails would no longer suffice in today's world. He needed to learn how to hack emails. With determination and persistence, Ramon set out to learn everything he could about hacking and soon found himself in the midst of a community of hackers. But Raymond didn't stop there. He had a brilliant idea. To combine the worlds of scammers and hackers, he recruited other hackers to join his small gang, 
with the aim of hacking into the emails of important people and companies rather than just sending scam emails. The idea was to make money by targeting employees or managers of companies that had clients or customers. The first step was identifying a target company, like a law firm or a real estate brokerage company. Ramon and his team would then search for the responsible person, such as the financial manager or one of the important accountants. Once they had found their target, they hacked into their work email, which was usually the official email of the company's website. After gaining access to the email, they didn't do anything at first. They simply observed the messages that went in and out of the account. This allowed them to learn about the nature of the work and the way official emails were formulated for this particular company. By understanding how the company operated, they could create more convincing scams. For example, in the case of a law firm, Raymond and his gang found that after the company completed work for a client, the financial manager would send an invoice to the client with the amount owed and the company's bank account details. Raymond and his gang of hackers simply copy the invoice and modify the bank account details, replacing the company's account with their own. They then sent the same invoice to the client, apologizing for an error in the bank details in the previous invoice and providing the correct account number. The customer would receive the email from the financial manager of the company's official email address, which the gang had hacked. Unknowingly, the client would transfer the payment to Raman Abbas and his gang's account instead of the company account. After sending the message with the modified invoice, the gang deletes this email from the company's inbox entirely to cover their traces so that the financial manager cannot discover what has happened. Therefore, they can repeat the same process with the same company and from the same email more than once as long as the financial manager remains oblivious to the ongoing fraud. Raymond Abbas and his gang were able to accumulate a significant fortune using this scheme. But Abbas knew that it was only a matter of time before they got caught. Despite their expertise in hacking emails and manipulating invoices, they were faced with constant hurdles due to the unreliable internet services in Nigeria. Moreover, the country had earned a notorious reputation for digital fraud, which made it increasingly difficult for Abbas and his gang to continue their illegal activities. The Nigerian government began to crack down on these gangs and began to take strict measures to restore their reputation in the world after it had been greatly damaged. Rahman Abbas made the fateful decision to abandon Nigeria and seek out a new destination. In 2014, he departed Nigeria's shores and headed for Malaysia. As fate would have it, many other scammers, including Yahoo Boys, also made the same decision, fleeing Nigeria's unreliable internet services and the crackdown by the Nigerian government on fraudulent activities. In Malaysia, they found superior internet infrastructure and sophisticated tools like VPN services that helped them mask their identities and locations. For Abbas, Malaysia became the new hub of his criminal empire as he employed the same schemes of fraud and hacking that we previously discussed, amassing millions of dollars from each successful scam. Despite being a scammer with an illegal income source, Raymond couldn't resist flaunting his riches to the world. He decided to create an Instagram account under the name Hush Poppy, and with one click, his lavish lifestyle was out in the world. At first, his pictures were ordinary, pictures of himself and what he was wearing. However, his flaunting began to evolve as he showed off his luxurious assets, the extravagant places he visited, and the high-end stores he frequented. Hush Poppy became a brand, a symbol of extreme wealth and status, donning only the finest clothes and visiting only the most luxurious places. From flashy watches to fancy cars, there was nothing he wouldn't showcase to the world. But his content wasn't all show. He mixed it with motivational posts, preaching about his journey from rags to riches, inspiring his followers to believe in themselves and achieve success. His Instagram page became a hub for those who dreamed of wealth and financial freedom, and with each post, he became more and more popular. Despite the risks, Raymond continued to flaunt his wealth, inspiring and motivating others while living life to the fullest. Hush Poppy Instagram account was a sensation, reaching its peak with two and a half million followers. 
he presented himself as a successful real estate investor, and as his popularity grew on social media, he started building relationships with wealthy and famous people. One of those people was Mumfa, a famous Nigerian with a reputation for having both legal and illegal businesses. Mumfa was living in Dubai, and he convinced Hosh Papi to move there, promising him that he could build even better relationships and increase his wealth in the city of extravagance. Hosh Papi took the plunge and moved to Dubai in 2016, eager to discover what the city had to offer. After he arrived in Dubai, Raman Abbas, or Hush Puppy, discovered a new level of luxury and extravagance. Dubai had everything he could ever want, and Hush Puppy began flaunting his wealth and lifestyle more and more. He only wore the most expensive brands, like Gucci. Hush Puppy also spent a lot of money on a collection of the most expensive watches and luxurious cars like Rolls Royce, Bugatti, and Lamborghini and he bought a luxurious apartment on the top floor of a residential building. As he continued to post about his lavish lifestyle on social media, Hosh Papi became the talk of the town. People couldn't get enough of his glamorous lifestyle, and he continued to build relationships with even more wealthy and influential people. Hosh Papi's life was a thrill ride, and he was living it to the fullest. But behind this luxurious facade, there was a darker side to his life. This man was the mastermind behind a gang that constantly schemed and scammed their way to wealth. As time passed, their operations grew bolder and more audacious. At one point, they even attempted to swindle a well-known English football club that plays in the English Premier League. Their plan was to make off with a staggering $124 million, and they were extremely close to succeeding. They had even managed to hack into the club's financial emails. But British banks ultimately foiled their scheme by refusing to transfer the funds to the gang's account in Mexico. But this failed operation didn't stop the gang from succeeding in other massive heists. In fact, they were able to steal $13 million in a single operation, targeting an American bank. With his ill-gotten gains, this man lived a life of excess and indulgence. His wealth amounted to half a billion dollars. He strutted down the streets wearing clothes, watches, shoes, and jewelry worth up to $300,000. He was so rich that even brands vie for his attention, inviting him to their exclusive parties and showering him with gifts as a sign of appreciation for his extravagant purchases. In Dubai, the land of the ultra-wealthy, he was probably spending more than anyone else. Let's take this picture as an example. Hush Puppy took this photo and posted it on Instagram. He was wearing clothes from the brand Fendi and had shopping bags, all from the same expensive brand, around him. These shopping bags may have items worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. This was free advertising for the company. However, on his birthday, Fendi sent him a cake as a gift. And like any social media savvy person, Hush Puppy posted a picture of it on his Instagram. But little did he know, this seemingly harmless action caught the eye of the FBI. The Hush Puppy Gang had stolen hundreds of millions of dollars from American companies, and the FBI was hot on their trail. With every post Hush Puppy made, the FBI could track his every move. And when he shared that picture of the cake, they had a breakthrough. They finally knew his exact birth date and age. But the FBI didn't stop there. They followed an old visa application he had submitted to the U.S., and they uncovered his true identity, along with all of his personal information. It was like finding the last piece of a puzzle they had been trying to solve for years. As the FBI delved deeper into their investigation of a criminal organization, they came across a man named Galib Alomari. Galib was Canadian, but it was clear from his name that he had Arab roots. He was involved in money laundering for various parties, including North Korea. He had six major clients who were all scammers, and one of them was Hush Puppy. When the FBI finally seized his phone and computer, they hit the jackpot. They discovered concrete evidence of Hush Puppy's involvement in the gang's activities, which provided strong evidence against him. The FBI quickly contacted Dubai authorities, who sprang into action 
preparing six teams to raid different locations at once. On the night of June 8, 2020, these teams simultaneously raided different locations where members of the gang, including Hush Poppy, were residing. They also raided his penthouse, which served as his residence and main headquarters. It was a thrilling and coordinated takedown that sent shockwaves throughout the criminal underworld. Anyway, Hush Poppy and his notorious gang of 12 members were finally brought down. The authorities seized an astounding amount of up to $40 million from their residences. Hush Puppy's downfall was attributed to his uncontrollable love for social media and the constant need to flaunt his wealth to the world. However, his arrogance and greed ultimately led to his undoing. The Dubai police apprehended him, and he was extradited to the United States, where he faced justice and was locked up for a significant period. The trial, held on November 8, 2022, was the final nail in the coffin for Hush Puppy, as he was sentenced to 11 years in prison. And here we have come to the end of the story. Let me know your opinion in the comments. Was the 11-year verdict fair, or does Hush Puppy deserve a longer sentence in prison? Don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button. We also have some amazing videos that you can watch. Thanks for watching along, and goodbye.